This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by GoToAssist. Welcome back to Hack 5. We've got a very noisy demo in the studio here. Shannon is on the AR drone. And Paul, if you pull up my screen here, I'm actually SSH'd into our pineapple. And then from our pineapple, I've gone ahead and actually connected to the AR drone and telneted to it. And I'm just going to go ahead and do a PS and you can see all of the processes running. There are two processes I'm interested in, this program.elf and this respawner. But uh, just for demonstration purposes here, why don't we just go ahead and kill dash K-I-L-L, the, uh, the process here, I'm going to use a PID of program.elf, and then Paul, if you could switch back to wide camera so we can see this. As soon as I press enter here, <laughs> you noisy thing it. goes away. Now, noisy, noisy thing is going to come back. back. And so if you just bring it forward, try it again, yep. And I'll press up and I'll press enter. Oh. <laughs> and we could do that all day it's long. It's such a sad noise. I know. Boom. <laughs> it's the responder that is at this point um, making it do this again. Hang on, let me kill it again. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let me take out the battery before it tries to Saying bite no. my hand off. Um, <clears throat> So basically, if, if people would watch Hacktip, they already know about kill and the process and finding, using PIDOV to look at the processes yeah, and finding the numbers. It's a Linux box, which is beautiful because, I mean, so is, you know, the pineapple strapped on the bottom of here. In fact, they're both running in a Thero system on a chip. Uh, so, you know, it, BusyBox Ooh. is, it's just, it's kind of like Bash, and I'm very familiar with it, and I'm super happy to be on here doing that. Oh, right, I lost my connection, of course, because the drone is now off. Um, but I am on the pineapple, so let me go ahead and show you the code. Okay. Okay, so let's uh, go ahead and take a look here. I should be able to see my pineapple. Yes, so let's SSH over to the pineapple. Great, and in my root directory, I have here a script called dronepone.sh. Did the you write that? Yes, Is that I did. Written one. Okay. I, I did this as a shell script rather than as an infusion. Although I probably will go back later and make this a pineapple infusion and add some features. Why did you just do it as a script? Um, well, first and foremost, this is right now still in proof of concept. Like it, ah, it runs, okay. it runs just fine. But there are some things where I could like clean it up a bit. Um, and what I really wanted to do though was take advantage of one of the nifty features of the pineapple Mark V. So the boot switches here allow us to define different boot modes, different things for it to execute when it starts up. I've got it in a generic mode now, but if I flip these three down in the center, whenever I start up, my pineapple will now be a drone killer. Oh, no. So I've just rubber banded it to the DJI because <laughs> I find it to be a superior platform. Cool. Um, but, you know, stop it. <laughs> it, it's actually, As it makes noises. No, it's agreeing. It's just agreeing with us. Oh, it's, okay. it's actually, it's we're doing a little test here for some perch and monitor stuff later. Ooh. But um, let's go ahead and get into that code. And yes, it's very proof of concept at this point. You can see what we're doing here. It's all a big while loop. So while true, which will always be the case, do all of this. Basically, the first thing it wants to do is an IW uh, to scan for SSIDs, and then it only looks at the names of the SSIDs, and it's looking for AR drone. Okay. In fact, yeah. very similar Easy to, to if I come down here, just in the Windows Manager, we'll see we have pineapple5 underscore 150F. Yes. That 150F is the last two octets of the MAC address, and we're not the only ones that do that because you'll see phantom 100BCD, uh, and that is the this MAC address? Last for the MAC address Perfect. of the Phantom, and if the AR drone were on right now, you would see the same thing. Okay. So, uh, so it does. It ends up finding those, and if it, it if it says drone found, it continues with this big nested if statement inside of a loop, where it then defines the drone SSID as that, and then it tries to connect to it. So very simply, iwconfig wlan1 ESSID, and then whatever the name of the drone is. Okay. Now you'll see already, everybody's thinking, well, what if you found two drones? Mm -hmm. And I haven't put in any logic for that yet. <laughs> so if you take this to the park and there's two kids having fun with mm -hmm. drones, I'm not sure which one you're going to disconnect. So you could probably put in some more logic there later for that. But once it associates, uh, first thing we want to do is test our association. So we you know, do an IW config on WLAN 1 to see if we see a drone I, uh, drone's um, 
SSID, and if we do see that, then we continue and set our static IP address. Now we could use UDHCP to get an IP address from it, but we already know that it's, you know, it's, there's nobody on 192.168.1.5, or at least there yeah. shouldn't be, so we're just going to go ahead and static IP ourselves to that anyway. When you connect your phone to it, it just goes through DHCP and gets an IP anyway. Okay. Uh, it tests the connection by pinging it with just one ping to 192.168.1.1, and if it gets an IP back, then we continue on. And this is where the magic happens. I love empty. Empty is one of my... Uh, what is empty? Empty is very similar to expect. So expect is this awesome. I haven't worked with either of those. Yeah. Okay, well, you're going to love expect when you get to it in Linux because basically it's a way to automate stuff. So the way expect works is you could say um, expect dollar sign, like your prompt, mm -hmm. right? And then you would say if, you, if you're expecting dollar sign, your prompt, then you can tell it what to do. And in oh, okay. ca that case, you could say ls, okay. right? Um, and then you would expect a directory, a name of a directory that you expect right. to see. Yeah. So you would expect that directory, and then you could do a CD over to it. Yeah. Uh, same thing with, you know, you could uh, use passwd to change your password. You would expect yeah. to see the word change, right? Mm -hmm. Well, then you say expect the word change, and then do in response to that something whatever, else. something else, okay. like type yeah. in your password that makes twice. Sense. Uh, so in this case, so you can make that as long as you want and just keep. You scrolling. can keep going, and cool. empty is a version of that for OpenWRT that I really like. That all works based on files. So the TACF creates the file and sets up our, our system here. The TACI sets our input file, and mm -hmm. TACO is our output file. So everything is a standard input and output, which makes it really beautiful. Uh, even sets up a process ID, and then our command over here in Nano is just to tell net to 192.168.1.1. Oh, okay. Because Telnet is open on the AR drone, because the Parrot guys are cool and they want you to hack it. Yeah, that's which awesome. Which is awesome. <laughs> um, after that, we you know just continue on with our empty uh, here and just tell it to go ahead. We are expecting the word busybox, which is what we will Why see. Why are you if, expecting busybox? Well, because when you first Telnet to it, it tells you what the command break, what you know, what the control, uh, the the keyboard shortcut is mm -hmm. to break out, and it will say. Just like when you SSH into the pineapple, it'll say, welcome to pineapple. Yeah. It's based on OpenWT. Here's yeah. a cocktail you can make. Um, when you telnet into it, the it will, the, the, dr the air, air, air drone, it will say busybox, which is like bash. Oh, okay. right. OK, got it. So, when, so if we see busybox, which we expect to see, it will go ahead and run kill, dash kill, and then I had to escape out here. You just have to make sure you do that backslash, or else it'll happen on your local system. Uh, grov, or back tick, grave, grave pid, pid of, of program.elf, and then again, grav. And that backslash n is So it's killing, is of enter. Dot, or it's killing the dot elf yes. program file yes. on the parrot air drone. Yeah, which is right here. Now, I mean, cool. we could do a PS and see that its pid number was 282, or um, 828. But of course, uh, this respawner program here, you can see uh, yes. pid number 825 is bin program.elf.respawner.sh. And I took a look at it. It's just a shell script that loops around and <laughs> makes sure that program.elf is running. And if it's not, it restarts it, which is why when we that's kill program.elf. And that's why it comes back. Yeah. Okay. So if we were really nefarious, we would run two commands. We would kill program.elf, and we would cr kill program.elf.respawner.sh. And then okay. it wouldn't restart itself. <laughs> but then you'd have to unplug the battery and plug it back in. This yeah. is more fun. Yeah, I this feel is like. a lot more fun. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's pretty much what it does. I mean, after that, it just um, kills empty and then, you know, echoes back, splash one drone. Um, <laughs> you know, a lot of this could be replaced so with, like, logger to put it into our syslog. Right. But I'm just using echo and uh, then it'll sleep for 60. You know, I, like okay. I said, very sleep basic for logic. Seconds. Yep, that's okay. all it does. So if yeah. I just do drone pwn, it says no drones found. And so every minute it's going to check for AR drones in the vicinity, and if it sees one, and it'll, it'll kill run it. the same program again, and it'll kill it each minute That's if there is one in the area. That's all it does. Perfect. Yep. There we go. See. Yay! That is so funny. I don't know if I like that situation. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> this might end badly. Yeah. Okay. So we know it's started. Yeah. 
And that is a really beautiful thing about how like all of these consumer uh, devices are actually just using open Wi-Fi for crazy. convenience. And I mean, we it's not the like the DJI like is any better. It's doing the same thing. And I'm already hacking this guy to see if I can replicate its functionality Ooh. with a Mark V because this is just a repeater. Yeah. Um, this makes me wonder, yeah. like, can you do the same things with like the thermostats that are open Wi-Fi? I'm working on a thermostat <laughs> hack, uh, but only because I have a new apartment and I want my thermostat to be programmable. But if yeah. you're going to get a gadget, you have to hack it first. And then your girlfriend's all like, how come the thermostat doesn't work? And you're like, look, well, I had to hack it. Why can't you just let anything be? And anyway, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, what are we talking about again? <laughs> I have that problem at home, too. <laughs> yes. Oh, and so there we go. It just saw, so as you can see, uh, drone found attempting to connect. You know, testing the wireless connection. We can see that we are connected to it. Successful. Okay. Setting a static IP. We do our ping. If our ping is successful, connecting over to Telnet and send the kill command. Yes, awesome. And thankfully, it was not in flight this time because we have found out the hard way that you are not supposed to touch the props. Don't touch the props. Ooh, did you do that? No. Okay, yes. good. Yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah, cool. Of course, Darren's hurting himself. Um, I value your feedback on this, so I want to hear what you guys think. There are so many ways that you can expand upon this. This is just some proof of concept shell script here. But um, check out uh, uh, Sammy's uh, uh, Skyjacking script. It's yes. a Perl script. In fact, a Perl script would run on the pineapple. Uh, I think you just need Node.js as well. Um, and you could even just send UDP packets to port 5556 to control so this awesome. thing. So if you, do, if you have a pair AR drone, like they encourage hacking and I encourage hacking and I just love the idea that we can own it with a pineapple and a bigger drone. Now I kind of want to get one for Christmas like for my fiance just so I can screw with him. <laughs> yeah. Why does my parrot keep on dying? Ah! You're, you, you, you're a D author, I have a feeling. Yeah, okay, okay well, feedback at hack5.org or just leave a comment, and uh, we look forward to hearing what you guys think. Yes. And uh, with that, we're going to take a quick break and then wrap this bad boy up. See you guys on the other side. An IT issues pop up anytime, totally inconveniently. I mean, it's always user problems or network and server issues. You've got viruses and whatever have you. I mean, staying on top of it all, kind of challenging, completely stressful at some moments, and that's why I'm super excited about GoToAssist by Citrix. All of the services you need are integrated into one simple cloud-based tool set, so you can take control over your unpredictable IT world. I mean, GoToAssist monitoring helps you quickly identify potential issues at the source before they become your boss calling you and being like, what the hell, why is the exchange server down? You're like, oh, I don't know, it's about the thing. Uh, you can customize the dashboard to display the performance of all of your networks, all of your servers and desktops. You can get proactive alerts that ensure that you're the first to know, not your boss calling you. You're the one that says, hey, maybe I should clear out that C drive of all those log files before it eats itself. Because, you know, we've all been there. And with GoToAssist remote support, you can provide unattended support to any PC, Mac, or mobile device from anywhere. And you can easily keep track of all of this with the GoToAssist service desk. I highly recommend GoToAssist. I mean, I had honestly used it when I was a systems administra uh, administrator. It made my life uh, so much easier. I've tried all of the other fun, crazy ways with port forwarding foo, uh, this is super simple and you can walk anyone through it over the phone. So sign up for your special 30-day free trial today. Visit gotoassist.com, click on the Try It Free button and use the promo code HACK5. That's gotoassist.com, promo code HAK5. We're back and now it's time for the Technolust photo of the week. This one comes from Vernon and it's a picture of a couple of his old machines. One of those is an MSI computer and the other one is a North Star computer. That's so old school. I love it. Thank you so much for sending those in, Vernon. Of course, if you have photos to share, you can send those over to us, feedback at hack5.org. Make sure to use the subject line Technolust so that we can find them real nice and easy. Well, that just about wraps up this week's episode of Hack 5. But before we get going, of course, a few little we thingies have. here. Yes, the hack shop. Cleaning. So we have plenty of all all sorts of really, really cool holiday um, gift buying. We have specials. Buying. Yes, plenty of specials. There's a special on the Wi-Fi pineapple. And on the duck. Yes, and there's a special on the duck. So pretty much everything that you could ever want is mm. available. Uh, get your hacking gear. When do those Strap some hacking things? gear to a drone. When Send us some videos. Expire? Let us know what you're doing. Are they a limited time only? Just I, whenever we run out? You know, out? through the maybe new the New Year's. Year. Okay, through the New Year. Yeah. yeah. We'll see. Know. We'll play it by ear. Yeah, know. we play it by ear. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> also, definitely check out um, feedback at hack5.org. That's where we can get all of your feedback. And we do read the emails, even though we don't get to yeah. answer all of them. Ooh. And if you're in the Bay Area and you're into FPV, Paul and I are looking, like there was an RC group, but they're dead in the water. So anyway, like hit us up because we're totally into this stuff and we've been doing it for the last couple of weeks and are just like, yes, more insane stuff that involves Wi-Fi hacking and Yay. avionics. So fun. And also don't forget, I am at Snubs on Twitter. He is at Hack5Darren. That would be me. And you can find all of our links to our social networks at hack5.org slash follow. All right. Well, until next time. I'm Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. Trust your techno lust. I'm scared. Oh, that, that was didn't bad. last long. <laughs> well, I saw it drifting and I was like, maybe I should just put it down. Okay, go on. Whew, that thing scares me. <laughs> Stand up for the thumbnail. I feel like it should be going up, but it doesn't. It doesn't go. Ooh.